Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison here. I'm hoping you're seeing this video because you have already seen that I'm going to be taking all of the maths and further maths A-level exams this summer. And a few people were concerned about how I might be able to affect the grade boundaries. Now, let me just start off by saying I am not a chief examiner. I don't have the ins and outs of how this works, but I have read a couple of things and I've linked those articles that I'm talking about in the description as well, in case you want to go into a little bit more detail. Now, before we think about exactly how an examiner would go about this, let's just get a bit mathematical, a bit statistical about the approach that we would take. Now, if you were a senior examiner and you were going to try and pick just one piece of data to try and understand how a cohort of students found a paper, which you think they would be more interested in, the mean or the median? Well, the mean is going to be influenced by all of the extreme values and so is less useful. It's going to be affected by outliers at the top end and at the bottom end. Now, the median should tell us a lot more about a typical student, which is kind of what we want to think about. How did they find the paper? Now, uh, the typical student is the median, right? It's the one that is bang in the middle. And with thousands of pieces of data, one single edition cannot affect the median. There would be so many results in the middle bunched around that kind of typical mark that adding one extra score in, hopefully at the top end, I'm already thinking, I'm hoping to get one of the top marks, um, that it wouldn't shift that median at all. So from this point of view, I have no concerns about my impact on the median. And although the mean is likely considered, I think my potential impact is just so insignificant. So if you think about the fact that maths is sat by around 60, 63,000 students each year, the addition of a full mark paper is me being very cocky and thinking I'll get full marks. I've done some calculations and think I could increase the mean mark by about 0 0.0006 marks. I mean, this is so tiny. And if I were to get full marks, it would also be considered as an outlier. And so it isn't really an important piece of data to consider when setting those grade boundaries. Here's something that you might not know about that I think is really, really interesting. Now, boundaries are often informed by whole cohort predictions of which private candidates don't usually influence or can't really influence. So let me tell you a bit more about this. Ofqual, who sort of um, are to do with qualifications, they're the government organisation around qualifications, they will make whole cohort predictions about how they expect that cohort to do on a paper or on their A-levels on the whole or rather kind of what distribution of grades that they would expect. So let's just imagine a scenario here. Let's say that across the whole country nationally, there was a year 11 cohort who did amazingly well in their GCSE and they did much better than the previous years. It would make sense that those cohort, those year 11s who did really well in their GCSEs deserve to have a higher proportion of A's and A stars awarded, whether the papers were easy or harder, to try and reflect the fact that they are a smarter year group. Now you might think this isn't very fair, but this is actually how GCSE grade boundaries are done as well. They look at your data from year six and they make those projections of how many grade nines and eights should be awarded when you do those exams in year 11. And so what the chief examiner needs to do is they need to look at this data about how people have done historically, as well with the actual performance data of the exams and try and kind of match them together so that it feels fair. Because obviously every year the, the challenge of the exams is going to vary and that's something that is, is a very tough job for them to try and keep it consistent. So my GCSE performance data is not going to be included as a private candidate. My GCSE data is very, very old and it's not something that can factor into this. Um, and so, yeah, I just think it's I can't have an impact on that kind of element of the discussion as well. Just to kind of tell you a little bit more about this, you can actually see this in action within different subjects. Um, if you look at further maths, for example, in 2023, 56.8% of the grades were A and A star. But for maths, it was only 40.6% of the grades that were A and A star. And this is a reflection of the fact that further math students tend to have a higher GCSE point score, a higher GCSE grades on average than a math student. And so the examiners reflect the the previous attainment of the students in those exams to give out more A's and A stars in further maths than they do in maths. Here's something else that I also found really interesting when I was looking into this, is that they actually don't set for A-level the grade boundaries of each grade. They don't say this is an A star, A, B, C, D, E. And I'm just going to tell you about this process, about how they do this. So the first thing that the examiner will do is they will decide what is the pass mark? What is the mark to get a grade E? The next thing that they do is they say, what is the boundary to get a grade A? After that, the other boundaries are all created as arithmetic boundaries, which literally means between the A and the E, they literally just evenly space them. So they can be in control of how many get A and A star and how many actually pass or how many fail at the bottom. 
but the distribution in between is literally just evenly spaced so you might get quite a bit more variation year on year of people getting b's and c's they might change just because of the fact they are sort of evenly spread out in that kind of way um and i don't know, I just think that's kind of crazy same with an a star an a star kind of gets set above the a hopefully with that same distance as well so they're not even setting grade boundaries at each individual level so in conclusion, there is no exact science to how these boundaries are set. The examiner is taking into account a huge number of different factors, which actually we should feel reassured by that it's not just one hard measure of how things are done. I think that there is no impact in my single contribution that it can have on the median. I think my impact on the mean is absolutely minuscule. And actually, I don't even think these data points are the things that are being examined. These examiners are statistically trained to look at data as a whole picture, not just as summary statistics. And outliers do form a part of that picture, but they can't influence the final outcome. They shouldn't influence the final outcome. Now, if there are a lot of outliers, if there are loads and loads of people who are doing very, very well in a particular exam, well, they're not really outliers anymore, are they? They become a significant group that need to be considered because they are a part of that trend. And one person by themselves can't do that. So as long as every like maths teacher in the country is not going to do the same thing as I am at the same time as me, I can reassure you that my impact is insignificant. And I hope that all the things I'm going to be able to offer you about my preparation for these things is going to be way more valuable than anybody worrying about my impact on these grades. So good luck with all your studies and I will see you as we go along this process over the next few months.